Greetings, folks, and uh, happy Wednesday. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I'm taping this on Tuesday, the day after Memorial Day. So I hope everyone had a great holiday and took time uh, to consider, to remember uh, these men uh, that sacrificed their lives, um, the women and children that sacrificed fathers and uh, brothers and sisters, uh, so many lives lost in order to, um, in order to fight uh, to sustain the freedom that we that we have uh, and in America's history uh, always in my opinion for a just cause um, and there are many stories of the valiant efforts uh, of these men and, and how they've sacrificed their lives um, and there's uh, when we talk about fighting uh, whether it's in a physical sense in a war or in a spiritual sense that you and I do uh, every day really uh, as Christians um, many similarities. Uh, one of the examples of the bravery, uh, and there are many, many stories like this uh, that I heard about recently, was uh, Lance Sijan, uh, 25 year old uh, lieutenant in the Air Force, who was shot down uh, in enemy, enemy lines uh, in uh, North Vietnam on April 13th, 1942. Um, so he. Um, he, he, he's ejected from the plane, um, he gets a fractured skull, breaks his leg, um, knocked unconscious uh, behind the enemy lines there. And he, um, he, he kind of scurries about in the jungle and stays alive and evades enemy capture for about six weeks. He was finally able to make contact uh, through his radio and we are gonna come and try to get him, but he told them to stay back because there were hundreds of enemy soldiers in that area. So he said, I'll, I'll press on. Well, unfortunately he gets captured um, and he is, he is a POW and, and he is just uh, tortured, beaten. And still he would only give up his uh, name, rank and service number, would not give any information whatsoever. Um, never complained, uh, and his motto and his encouragement to the other POWs was to never give up, never give in, uh, never uh, to keep resisting and to keep fighting, always keep fighting. And it was a big encouragement to those, the other POWs who had survived. Uh, Lance uh, Sijan ended up uh, passing away within that year from uh, pneumonia, but with just a great inspiration to the people around him. So. You know this kind of fight uh, that determination whether it's physically shooting a gun throwing a hand grenade swinging a punch uh, resisting uh, unwilling to give up information it is very very impressive in the book of deuteronomy uh, the lord gives instruction uh, to the people about what to do uh, before battle and deuteronomy chapter 20 starting in verse 1 it says, when you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than, than you, do not be afraid of them for the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt is with you. So he said, you know, when you go against enemy, enemies that are bigger and stronger than you are, and our enemy is bigger and stronger than we are. Uh, the devil's, uh, he's slick, he's powerful, he's smarter. We are no match for him. But the instruction to Israel and to us is remember your Lord is with us and our God uh, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world and that is very true so it's not our strength but his strength and we have to remember that we have to rely on that continually every single day um, let me read on verse 2 Oh, and by the way, he, he mentions, he said that the Lord, the Lord that brought you out of the, the land of Egypt, the Lord is always reminding Israel, I did it before, I'll do it again. I took you out of Egypt, we battled against Egypt, I'll defend you against the Philistines, whatever it is. And the Lord takes us back in our memory too. Remember when I did this for you? Remember when I prevented you from getting into that? Remember I defended you against this, this oppressor? He reminds us, and it's good not to forget those things because he's always faithful. Uh, verse number two, when you are approaching the battle, the priest shall come near and speak to the people. He shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, you are approaching the battle against your enemies today. Do not be faint-hearted. Do not be afraid. 
or panic or tremble before them, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you. So the Lord is saying, before you go out to the fight, listen to the priest. Get the priest there to talk to you. And we need our high priest, Lord Jesus, to remind us of God's faithfulness and his goodness. And we're going through these things to get with someone who will speak the words of Christ to you. Your pastor, your good Christian friend, your good Christian co-worker. Let them encourage you as you go and battle these things. Whether it's depression, whether it's temptation, whether you're down because of finances, you're worried about the end of the world, whatever it is, meet with the priest. Hear the words of God to encourage you and to remind you that he is with you. Yes, we have to pray. We have to read the Bible. That is important, very important, because that continues to keep him before us. But it's the remembering, it's the relying upon him that is so important that faith needs to be there, especially during these times, um, because we got a tough enemy. Now, let me read a couple other verses. I just dropped something. Uh, if we go to the uh, the book of Ephesians, and I know this is a familiar one, Ephesians six twelve, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So the enemy is not the people. Um, it's, it's not. It's okay. Uh, there's nothing in the scripture that says you have to hate. Joe Biden, Taylor Swift, Robert De Niro, just because they speak and they do so much harm to our country and the freedoms that we love. Um, there are evil forces that work amongst people and um, those are our true enemies, both politically, domestically, in our churches, in our families. Uh, these spirits that get in and cause people to quarrel, that cause to get in and to bring things that could cause a family to divide, that could split marriages, all these things that are out there, all these evils, they are forces. And that is, that is our true, true enemy. It's hard to split sometimes a person doing the evil and the evil that's there. But we're not under any command to hate someone. Sometimes we feel like, well, I'm not doing my Christian duty if I don't hate some of these liberals. That's not true. Uh, well, I've got to hate my ex-wife. No, you really don't. It's okay if you don't, you don't want to do that. You just have to realize there are forces and influences in this world, and they're very strong, and often these people succumb to them. So, um, But that's truly where our enemy is, is in these... these um, uh, these rulers, these powers of the dark. Now, in um, 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, verse 8 and 9, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, lion looking for someone to devour. Uh, so that's creepy. He is very aggressive. Um, he is seeking you out. It's not like you're just going to sit back and lay back and be all Christian-y and not have any attacks. It's just not going to happen. He's looking for someone to tear up. And unfortunately, there's a lot of prey out there. Uh, resist him, uh, standing firm in the faith, because you know uh, that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. So remember that. One of the tricks of the enemy is to think that you're the only one going through this. You're all alone. No one else has that temptation. No one else is holding on to that bitterness. Nobody else is insecure as you are. That is nonsense. The enemy comes and he brings that crap to all of us. And a lot of us are suffering and dealing with those kind of things. You are not alone. But resist him. If you were walking down the street and a bunch of guys jumped out of a white van trying to pull you in, you'd be ready to fight. You'd be swinging and pushing and pulling, getting out of there. We need to resist um, the thoughts, the resist to open the mouth and say things we shouldn't, the resist to react in anger. Um, 
the resist to fall to temptation, all of these things, it's a fight. It's a, it's a very um, active thing to do, this fighting, this resisting, and we need to do it um, often and continual because the attacks are often and continually there. Lastly, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Remember that confession. You confess that you continue to confess your love and your knowledge of Christ and your belief and your trust in him. Take hold of that. Don't let it go. Fight the good fight of faith. Um, it's something that we've got to grab onto and hold on to it and keep it. Um, it's almost like if a Miss America contest, someone comes and puts the crown on her head. If someone tries to take it, she's going to fight back and try to grab that thing. The Lord has bestowed a love and a blessing on us. We don't want to be robbed of it. So fight and cling to it. Don't let it go. Um, God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful night and talk to you next week.